Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today's project is going to be a replacement of this pedestal sink with an actual vanity with a cabinet. Uh, this is something I've wanted to do for uh, several years now, so while it's probably not the champion of procrastination, it is definitely a contender, at least in my book. Um, it all started when the pop-up drain part had broken on this faucet uh, setup. And I was going to replace it. I'm like, you know what? Eh, I'd like to replace the whole thing. Replace the faucet. Bought two faucets. Replaced the uh, one upstairs. And uh, this faucet has been sitting here for about eight years now. So uh, just recently found a vanity. Picked that up. And so now is as good a time as any. Let's get to it. This is the vanity I'm going to be installing. I uh, bought this at the you know, one of the big box stores. Uh, pretty simple installation. It's two pieces and uh looks like the instructions are pretty easy so hopefully this won't take too long just some of the supplies that we'll need i need caulk to attach the sink to the cabinet a wrench uh screws a knife because i have to cut away the uh, the old caulk and some shims to level this on the faucet side we've got the faucet itself uh plumber's putty to seal the drain uh the drain components and water lines. I'm going to replace the supply lines as well. Uh, due to the age of the house, I did pick up some valves as well, just in case I run into a problem with the shutoff valves and need to replace those. I don't want to have to stop mid job uh, with the main water to the house cut off. Um, the other thing is, uh, this is not the original stem that actuates the pop up drain. Uh, the faucet upstairs, uh, it broke. And so I stole it out of this one to get it working again, and I was not able to find an exact replacement, so this is a universal replacement. As always, the first step with any plumbing project, I turn off the water. So just start with the cold. These valves have not been actuated in a while. So let's give it a little. Rock it back and forth a little bit. Any sediment, just have it dislodge and get out of there. There we go. Uh, all right, same deal. Just supporting it. There we go. All right. And good, we're not leaking. Sometimes they might leak, uh, in which case you might be able to kind of tighten up the seal here or possibly have to take it apart and repack it. All right, let's take off the drain. Disconnect the trap. Next, let's disconnect the supply lines by unscrewing them from the valve. Secure the valve to prevent stressing the pipe or valve. Oops, I forgot to put a towel down. Okay, let's disconnect the pop-up drain plug linkage. Right, so now let's get this caulk cut so that we can free the sink from the wall. It looks like this was not even anchored to the wall. It looks like it was just adhered with caulk. Cutting the caulk takes patience and care. I don't want to slip and cut myself or damage the wall. Take it slow and steady. Let the knife do the cutting. Leave a comment if you have a technique that works better than what I'm showing. I found that rocking and pulling the sink helped pull the remaining caulk from the wall and free the sink. I also unscrewed and dropped the P-trap. Plug the drain pipe with a rag to prevent sewer gas from stinking up the house. Yeah, it looks like the installer with a huge fan of caulk. The pedestal was caulked to the floor so well that rocking it loose broke and took up a piece of the tile. That's all right. New vanity will cover it. With the old sink out of the way, slide the vanity into place and check for appearance and spacing. 
One difference between the pedestal sink and this vanity is that the pedestal sink didn't go completely up against the wall at the bottom. Since the vanity does, I need to cut this trim so the vanity can actually go all the way up. This is solid in the back, so I can't notch the vanity. So the easiest is gonna be to mark this and cut the trim. The ideal tool for this job would be one of those multi-tools that offers a reciprocating edge cutter like this one. Then you could just cut a nice clean edge in the molding. Since I don't have one of them, I'll just use my trusty leather. With the vanity slid into place, let's check for level. This looks like it's the case. Good. I won't need to shim under the vanity. However, I will need to shim the wall, because look at this. It appears the drywall's not flat. There appears to be a slight bow in the wall. With the gap being relatively small, I'm not going to worry about trying to correct it. Next step is to locate the studs to anchor the vanity to the wall. I also need to avoid any wires or pipes in the area. Luckily, the wall's open on the opposite side because it's in the furnace room, so I can see everything. From this photo, you can see the pipes are clear of the wall where I need to anchor the vanity. And there's a block of wood which will serve as the other anchor point. Note on the wall here is a nail popping. That also serves as a good indicator for the stud location. Using the supply lines as landmarks and measurements taken from the other side, I can use a level to transfer the measurement to the vanity. Then I insert some shims on the left side to fill the gap. and drill the pilot holes for the screws. And finally, in go the screws to secure the vanity to the wall. Once secure, use a knife to trim the excess shim material. Let's install the drain flange. First, form some plumber's putty into a snake and wrap it around the underside of the flange. Press it into place so the flange will seal against the sink once installed. Well, the next thing I want to do too is drop the o-ring into the tailpiece here. All right, we're going to install the faucet. This says top front, so I'll put that in. Put that into the holes in the sink. Secure the faucet to the vanity top with the retainer nuts. Ensure the faucet is centered and not crooked, and that the gasket's still in place before fully hand tightening the nuts. Insert the drain flange into the sink. Next comes the thick gasket and washer. Ensure the tapered side of the gasket is toward the sink so it can press into the opening to seal it. I found this process to be a bit of a pain in the you know what. That gasket's pretty tight. I also found that a combination of pressure to slide it along with twisting got it to move. Leave a comment below if you have any tips on making this process easier. If your sink has an overflow port, be sure the openings in the flange align with the port in the sink drain. Put the washer on. Install the retainer nut, but save tightening it until everything is installed in case you need to adjust anything. So now, gasket installed. I'll screw this on. This one doesn't feel right there. That o ring popped out. Okay. So make sure that's on, but I want to make sure now that this faces the back lines up with the hole here and we're gonna just tighten that down you don't want this too tight because you don't want to crack the sink check that again that we're lined up with the hole here so this should be in good shape see some of the stuff is squeezed out so i'm just gonna run a finger on there to get that cleaned up these supply lines have a built-in tapered washer to seal against the faucet supply line stem. Install the supply lines by threading the compression nuts onto the faucet and then using a wrench to go a little beyond finger tight. 
You don't need to crank them super tight because you don't want to break anything. After a final test fit, set the sink aside, perhaps by leaning it against the toilet or a vanity out of your way. Be careful not to bump that drain. One whack can crack something and ruin your day. Run a bead of caulk around the top of the vanity. Set the sink into position. Yes, you might get a bit of caulk on your fingers. Once in place, gently press down to ensure it's fully seated and then wipe away any excess caulk from the sides. Alright, let's hook up the water lines. I'm just going to do a quick, just a wipe down of the threads. Make sure we're clean. So what I want to do is kind of give this guy a bend to get up here. I want to get it lined up as close to straight as possible. Do not want to cross thread these. Is the fastest way to turn a quick project into a long project. Okay, now we're on. Thread the nut until finger tight so the compression washer fully seats. Then use a wrench to snug it down a little bit more. Be careful not to over tighten. Repeat the process for the other line. All right, so we'll take our rag out here. Let's scrape that out a bit. Absolutely gross. Uh. <laughs> if you need to use an extension for your installation, install that now. Okay, so I did not follow my own advice of measuring and making sure I had everything I need before starting. Once I fit the P-trap, I realized that the drain line would not be long enough, so I had to run out and pick up an extension. All right, so back from the store with the extension. So we put this on there, we put the gasket on there. Sorry for the lack of good footage. Tight quarters had my shoulder blocking the camera. With the P-trap and extension installed, I measured the offset of the trap to the drain. About four and three eighths. So I need to shrink this by about four and three eighths. I then cut the tailpiece by that amount and I deburred the edge. And when we put this on, this is going to fully seat. And then we tighten that down. Okay. All right, so this is on. So I'm gonna reuse the old nut because I didn't buy a separate new one. Got the gasket here that goes on. This is going to go in here. So I'll do the same thing here. Put the nut on. Put the gasket on. Just kind of get it to line up so and this, this is fully seated which this has to kind of come all the way down first so get that down so it'll thread and then get it to tighten up so now i'm going to i'm going to tighten this one up make sure this is fully seated into here this to thread on. As this tightens, it'll squish that red seal to make a watertight seal. So that's on. Tighten that down. That's on, that's on, that's on. Tighten this up. That's on. Right, let's pull this protective film off. We're gonna take our rod, drop that in. One little issue I just noticed is this is the rod that is required to pop it up. And <laughs> we 
we're hitting the wall. So I got to shorten this rod a little bit. So uh, distance is not critical. This is the rod that comes down. So, you know, it's got to be you know, somewhere in this area. So I'm just going to lop off basically at the, uh, at the threads here. Before installing the pop-up linkage, ensure the supply lines are not in the way. Okay, we have our nut and our washer. That goes in there with the ball. So, so that forms a seal. So what has to happen is this post needs to catch that. So when this pivots up, it lifts the drain and then pulls it down. So that's how it works. So I'm gonna drop this in and then feed this in so that it hooks up. So we have this tab here. This is going to go facing away. And we're going to drop that in. First I need to align the pivot rod with the hole in the pop-up stopper. Sometimes it takes a couple of tries. Once engagement is confirmed by gently pulling the stopper to ensure it does not lift out, secure the pivot nut. Give it a quick check for proper operation. Next, slide one side of the spring clip onto the pivot rod, followed by the clevis strap, and then the other side of the spring clip. Select a convenient hole in the strap. Get the clevis strap to be roughly vertical and aligned with the lift rod. Slide the lift rod into the clevis strap, ensure the pivot rod is fully down, and then tighten the clevis screw. Check operation of the pop-up stopper again. Remove the aerator before running the water to avoid clogging it with any debris that may have dislodged while servicing the lines and valves or anything that might be in the faucet during manufacturing. Use a wrench to loosen it if you're unable to do so by hand, but use a cloth around the aerator to prevent scratching the finish. Don't let any of the parts go down the drain either. <laughs> so this is the aerator. This is what gives you kind of that, you know, bubbly, smooth, stream of water coming out so we want to take that out all right moment of truth time to turn on the water and see if we get wet good sign so far And now we're gonna turn the water on and let it flush for about 30 seconds. Ooh, washer came out. <laughs> and this thing is splashing a lot, so I'm gonna turn it down. Part of what we're doing is any debris, any factory, you know, lubricants, whatever that was in the faucet, you want to flush that out. You know, if you're going to be washing your hands and things like that, you don't want to get all that stuff on your hands. Okay. All right, let's put the aerator in. So I'll put that washer back on here. And there's our nice regular flow of water. I want to check for leaks, which it looks like we do have one right here. Uh, this is coming off the drain. So looks like that's gonna have to get tightened up a little bit. So I drop this down and then I'm reseeding it and giving it a little extra twist to Try and make sure it's nice and snug. It looked like it was weeping down into the through the gasket. So let's see if that fixes it. One thing I noticed was the seals did not seem to be immediately watertight. After a day, they seemed to settle under pressure from the nuts and stop dripping. My guess is they needed to distort into any minor imperfections in the mating surfaces to form good seals. 
we'll put on the decorative knobs. Again, don't over tighten. Snug it down. See, the drawers are a little crooked. Follow the instructions to adjust the door height in order to align the doors. Move this one down. That looks pretty good. I opted to run a bead of caulk along the top to hide the gap caused by the bowed wall. After running the bead of caulk, just smooth it with the finger. All right, so back and we're all done. So hopefully you got something out of this video. Maybe you saw something that you were wondering how to do that and uh, this showed it to you. Um, I'd say overall, this wasn't a super difficult project. Uh, I think getting the old one out was probably the hardest part, but I think the average do-it-yourselfer could probably handle something like this. Obviously know your limits. If you're not comfortable with something, know when to call the professionals in. You know, if you're a professional and you saw me do something that wasn't quite right or there's a better way to do it, leave a comment, let the other viewers know, so that way we're all learning and we're all improving. So if you like what you saw, you want to see more of my projects, hit that subscribe button, and until the next video, see you later.